previously on the Order 1986. I shall see you later, my friend. Get off the radio, they can hear me! What the fuck was that? I'm only the greatest scientist ever known to man. I invented electricity. He famished from screaming in horror. Ah! Jack the Ripper emerged with Wiggly! I only invented time travel, you stupid fuck! Hey, I want you to be the sobering mind to Leon Thorpe. Are you saying I have an alcohol problem, you cunt? I made the greatest scientific discovery of this era! Of any era! Of all the time! All eras! I think you're a fucking lichen! At least I'm not a drunk. At least I don't have a problem, my cocaine. Pierre made a remark as he looked at Lord Thorpe's beard. Your beard looks a lot darker if you stayed off of cocaine. Leon Thorpe would have none of that! Fuck you, Pierre, he said, screaming. I don't have a problem! You all got problems, he said, looking angry at everyone, like a fucking sneaky person. Pierre's asking himself, do you trust anyone, Leon? Leon said, I trust no one but myself and the white liquor, he said, pointing at his nose and tapping it secretly like it was some sort of code between them they knew lady fabisham exited the cart second galahad was royally pissed that she decided to take it upon herself to exit before him how dare you he said muttering under his breath leon thorpe began walking through the dazed halls of Whitechapel. what a great place he muttered i used to live here one time it was all exposition to Galahad. He paid no attention to whatever Leon was going on about. Literally in one ear and out the other as he walked through the peasant streets. He was too focused on the disgusting streets. My shoes. I bought Nikes. I have to fix them. I have to get new ones. You can't clean all this shit off of it. He screamed, having a little minor freak out. Pierre looked as Pierre always did. What are you looking at me for, Galahad yelled, screaming. I don't like you. Take the hint. Nothing. Beat it, asshole. Galahad continued walking through the White Chapel quarters. He saw, he walked up to what appeared to be a boarded up house. Of course, it was an enterable until he used his imaginary race. Don't have that gun? Okay, all right. Galahad approached the gate. Apparently, someone doesn't want to open it, he said. Hinting at Leon to do his fucking job. But Leon wouldn't. Leon instead offered to help Galahad move the giant log. Oh, so heavy, he said. Holding the door open for Lady Fabisham. Hoping that Galahad would be crushed immediately by the wood piece. Uh, and then Galahad's like, oh, it's too heavy. And he had to stop holding it. Because it, in fact was beyond his strength. You leave me with the Frenchman, he said, muttering under his breath. Pierre was like, hey, this is an opportunity for us two to hang out. We don't hang out a lot. Galahad was yeah, immediately approached what appeared to be a marijuana pipe. Huh, I shall save this for later, he said, noting that someone couldn't pull a choke. The idiot had nothing to do with their own weapon. And couldn't get high off that? They're stupid. Galahad walked, hoping that he didn't have to set foot on the streets once again. However, it was apparent that Pierre wasn't offering to carry him. Galahad approached what appeared to be a fine fruit stand. Hello, sir. What is it you're offering your wares? It was all disgusting, all rotten. Everything on it was gross. It was all the worst foods ever made. Just disgustingness. It was all like eels that had taken their skin inside out. It was totally gross. He didn't want to be here anymore. Galahad continued not opting to talk. Unfortunately, he opted to talk to Pierre. Ah, oh, what shall we do, Pierre, he asked. Pierre offered nothing but a smile. Motioning to Galahad to grab one of the apples. The apple was clearly fucking rotten. Rotten to the core. 
Not unlike Galahad's heart. Galahad took the apple, clearly stealing. He then, with a well-placed throw, threw it right into the guard's Oy. head. Oi, what are you doing there, the guard said. It was Wilfred Telshire. He didn't know what he was doing, and Pierre quickly took him from behind, doing unspeakable things to Wilfred. We couldn't even talk about it. At this instance, we watched as Galahad approached a group of men. Oi, I should hit him too! Ha ha ha, Galahad quipped. Maybe I'll, I'll kill him. Yeah! Pierre, get me another apple. I'm going to throw it at all these men. All of them. You hear me? Galahad pulled out his gun, shooting them all in the face. All four of them. He aimed a shot at Pierre, however it missed. Pierre said with a cocky grin, next time you will, you'll wish you didn't miss. He said, Galahad was quite shocked at what Pierre had uttered. It was a clear threat. He was ready to die. Pierre was going to kill him later on. However, they had entered the opium den. And quite the opium den indeed. I wish to procure some, Galahad thought. Take me out of this miserable existence, he said. Taking the opium syringe paper by its throat and looking at the reverse of it. Oh, a secret letter. Wow. The cult of L. He said, looking at the paper as he quickly realized he was surrounded all by heroin vampires. The zombies all woke up trying to attack him. He continued on his way because he could simply walk past them. They didn't even realize he was there. Opium is quite the drug, he muttered as he walked away. Quite the drug indeed. Galahad approached the public hanging of one Marie Trousseau. What was she doing up there, he wondered. Not actually knowing who this person was. Tied up to the goddamn gallows. Everyone started screaming. <laughs> screaming horrible chants. Wishing for Marie to be hung by her grossly proportionate neck. Ew. Galahad thought as he stared. What's that substance in between it? it was a fleshy white substance. Clearly not from human beings. Galahad merely noted that he wasn't welcome there amongst the Victorian crowd. I'm not a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I'm not afraid of you. I've got a gun. You think about that, he said. Threatening everyone, even Pierre. He was not done with taking shit from them. Galahad squeezed his way in between a wall that was too too small for any man reasonably able to squeeze between. Galahad was immediately accosted by one Mary Scott and then her husband, Terry Scott. Their names rhymed. How cute. Galahad dislocated his arm and then smashed Terrence's face right into the brickwork. It was disgusting and a little erotic at the same time. Galahad approached the woman. May I help you? He said. It was disgusting. Oh, turn away! Galahad screamed looking at her face as all this watery goo started pouring from her eyes. It was so gross. Ugh. It started screaming in high-pitched languages. Can you shut the fuck up? Pierre said to the woman as she was recoiling in horror, not realizing what had just happened to everyone. Perhaps she is a werewolf. We should put her down, Galahad thought. Put her down indeed. But her husband was dead. And they could get him to do the dirty work if they didn't kill him, so maybe that is the problem. Galahad immediately inserted the lockpick. In my own time, I would have just used the regular lockpick. Galahad quickly took note of the instructions. It involved some sort of task, a puzzle. He hated puzzles, like any man should. Just recklessly pushing his way through it. I give up, Galahad said. 
It was too complex for him to enter. Perhaps we'll have to use brute force. What if I use this on that woman? Do you think she'll remember? He said, pretending to stick the device in her ear. However, it did not stick. Galahad was merely spotted by the bottle merchants. They began throwing bottles at him. Galahad found a piece of newspaper. Oh. The assault of Mayfair. Quite, quite attractive. He didn't read it all. Not that he could read it all. He was more prone to dealing with pictures and numbers rather than the words of man. Galahad once more decided, oh, perhaps a second college try is in order, he said. Reluctantly beginning what would be the Stamford lockpick maneuver of 1886, he stuck the screwdriver in. I fucking hate this, he, he screamed, confessing to himself, realizing perhaps he wasn't the smartest tool in the shed. Galahad, after seven hours, finally got the goddamn door open. I'm pretty hungry right now, Galahad said to Pierre. You down for some fucking tacos later? Pierre was so astounded at Galahad's stupidity. You know, it's two buttons, he said. But he held that under his breath. Perhaps it wasn't something to let old stupid here, he thought. What do I see in him? Pierre, of course, was thinking nothing, as what would be revealed later in our little story. They entered the brothel. Oh, what an amazing thing. Jason Statham approached them. You understand? You put your guns away. He screamed, trying to grab the weapons off. Pierre and one Galahad. He called Galahad governor. <laughs> Galahad smiled, knowing that that was the only British word he truly understood. Inside the house of the ladies of the night, Galahad once ventured, walking up to one Monica Le Baron. I've certainly been in there before, he said. Making fun of her profession to one of the clients who was immediately off-put at Galahad's demeanor. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a ghost emerged! Galahad was immediately taken aback. I'm saving myself for Lady Fabisham, he screamed in her face. Pierre, trying to cover up his own inherent sexuality, questioning, was talking to three of the whores on the staircase. He was wondering what rate he could get for a group rate. He was certainly interested. He asked the women to reach into his pocket. Of course, he meant the front pocket. They immediately proceeded to find a bag of heroin. The other one grabbed something elongated that began getting slowly smaller as the time progressed. She started laughing her head off. What is that? The scene progressed as the trio managed to make their way upstairs. A menage a trois? Perhaps a menage a quatre, Galahad thought. As he continued walking through. The screams of passion from the ladies of the evening continued in the hallowed halls of one O oh, Bell de la White Chapel. The two women wondered what the fuck Pierre and Galahad were up to. They entered a room together in a whorehouse without the horse. I mean, if you're going bang the horse. However, <laughs> suddenly it became apparent this was a little more of a freaky party. As there was an already consummating couple. One Pedro Almar shooting Galahad in the chest. Oh, what a tragedy, Pierre thought as he laughed as his friend's demise played out in front of him. Pedro was not well at lasting long in bed. It was clear he had to use his pistol to intimidate the woman to get in there. The woman... Covering herself up in a sheet. Of course, it wasn't a well-placed sheet. Take it off, Galahad screamed. I'm gonna finish what he started. It was, this was getting real dark real fast. Pierre was like, I'm not into this, he said with a French expression on his face. He offered no remorse for Galahad's own actions. Look at that. What a failure, Galahad said. We'll do this together, Galahad remarked. Pierre immediately taken aback by what Galahad had said. Pierre, not quite sure what Galahad was getting at, but he knew it wasn't something friendly. 
As they looked at the woman in awe, continuing on their way outside of Oh Belle de la White Chapel. More screams of passion were heard as Galahad made his way out, hopefully claiming onto the roof, seeing the new Mexican architecture that had been laid out in the design of the building. It was quite astounding. Galahad leapt to his death, slowly falling into the streets of White Chapel. If only Jack the Ripper had been here sooner, maybe my job would be done, Galahad remarked. As he played a game, a dangerous game of let's climb the side of buildings. Galahad did this in his drunken stupors almost every single day. Galahad problems. Money problems. So he wasn't pruned to using the more adequate forms of entertainment. Rather... He had to live a simple life, climbing on walls. You stupid f fuck, Pierre thought, looking at Galahad's flawless hair. You stupid fuck fuck fucking deed. Nice. Galahad proceeded, this time unaided by his friend Pierre, who had seemingly gotten lost in the streets of Whitechapel. Do you fucks not have the GPS? I screamed into the monitor as Galahad continued endlessly. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying this Let's Play. Be sure to leave a like, share it on social media. It always helps me out. I appreciate if you guys could show some love to this series. It's new. It's new for me to do a Let's Play. And I hope you guys are enjoying it very much. Peace out. I will see you in the next episode of The Order, 1986.